We all love stories. God made us that we enjoy stories. And in fact, I think we spend millions of pounds a year going to the cinema to hear a story. Some of us go to see first day edition books and bookstores to see the author and to buy his books and to read a story. Now, I think the greatest storyteller is Jesus. Fantastic storyteller. And he paints a picture with the story. We can visualize it through the story. Welcome, Marius. <laughs> the paint, if you like, or the brush is the gospel. And it's dipped into the paint pot of truth. And the paint is that love. And he paints this picture which will never die. And enriches us. Like any picture, every time you look at it, you see something new in it. A beautiful picture, you will always find something new in it. In a picture of love that's painted by love. And so we return to this fantastic story. The prodigal son. In fact, it's the best known story within the Bible. And some of you are going, oh no, not the prodigal son again. But it has brought many to faith. Now I may be many things. I may not have the wonderful eloquence of certain people. I may not be educated in certain areas. But the one thing I know that I am is I'm not lost. Jesus found me and has saved me. So as we start this story, sorry we're not on the farm this, this weekend. Um, we had a wedding last night and um, uh, so we, it's difficult to get on the farm. So what I want to, to share with you is that men find it difficult sometimes to show love. Dads do. My dear father roughly passed away a year ago. And I remember very, very clearly, I've shared with you before, the first time I told my father I loved him was in Moscow. And... Um, my father never returned and didn't say, I love me back. And I knew he loved me, but in the last year and a half when he stayed with us, he started to do something which proved to me of his love. He started to kiss me. He kissed me. I knew then of his love when he kissed me. And uh, we find it difficult sometimes as men to show that. Uh, I had um, a really good friend of mine who had, they had a young baby and she was sharing with me what it was like to have a young baby. And she said, one night my husband's upstairs in the nursery and I went upstairs and as I looked through the dimly lit, I could see that he was looking down at the, at the cot and the young baby in it. And... I just looked there for a while, and I could see there was a sense of, in some ways, an amazement, almost disbelief. And as I crept forward, and I, I, she said, Nigel, I, I, have a tear, I had a tear in my eye, and I slipped my arm into his arm and said, Danny, I'd, I'd love to know what you're thinking. And he said, I don't know how he managed to make this cot for 50 quid. <laughs> <laughs> we find it difficult to show how we can give our love. When my father kissed me, I felt safe. And we read in verse 20 that the father came out and kissed his son, ran out and kissed him. Plain speaking, when I, when I looked at various, because the power of Google, when I looked at various meanings of this, and, and, and people have written down different meanings to this one verse, 
The one word I liked, or the version I liked, was kissed him much. Kissed him much. When I shared this story with uh, Thomas and his friends, I said, now this chap wasn't, wasn't a good chap. And um, Tom corrected me. He said, Dad, at least he asked for his inheritance. He didn't just take it. Um, and there are some times, I think he was referring to the times I've gone out and my car's gone. <laughs> it's just not there. And uh, I had that trouble down at Budgies now. And I shared this this morning with somebody having breakfast. And I said, you know, I sometimes go out at Budgies and think, where have I parked the car? Where have I put it? Um, and uh, he pointed out he's got to the age where he can't even remember what car he drives. But this guy, this young man who went away, did at least ask for his inheritance. And he lived a real life. Do we in this church always live a real life? And uh, I, I sometimes get cross myself that I'm sharing the good news to, you know, to people that I meet about Jesus. And then I'm driving along a car and a black cut crosses my path. And I think, oh gosh, I'm going to get good luck. I sometimes live, if we're not careful, into two areas that we shouldn't. But he lived a real life. My friends, there is one truth. One truth. That this story, as the father comes out and kisses us, we learn from this story that God wants to give us much love. Jesus talks in these three parables about the lost and the found. And his main prime reason in this one is to show how much God loves us. And we see by the Father how much he loves his own son. God loves a returning sinner. Somebody who has returned to him. This kiss would not have happened if the son hadn't got up and said, I must go to my father. Now there may be people here who's yet haven't made that decision to get up and go to our Lord God through Jesus Christ. There are some people, perhaps like myself, who sat on the fence for many years, talking about it, thinking about it, but this son made that decision to go back to his father and he was given many kisses. Much kisses shown. Much kisses. And what do we do when we receive this kiss? Well, in my own instance, when I felt this kiss, I felt so close, close to, the, to our God. Same as when my father kissed me for the first time, I felt so close to him. Be still and know that he is God. And receive that big love that only God can give you. He pours his love onto us through those kisses that he gives us. Not in dribs and drabs or small trickle, but it's a stream of love that comes to us. Much love through those kisses. Through those kisses we also learn he keeps us safe. He preserves us. He keeps us from harm. I know that because he kisses by the lip. It's not a half kiss. You know, what are we doing now? We go, mm, don't we nowadays? The people we don't. This is a true kiss. Kiss on the lips. Kiss on the neck. He runs to meet us to give us that kiss. We may limp towards him, saying, you know, shall, I, shall I follow Jesus? But God runs to us and kisses us. Runs. The father ran to his father, to his son. I pray that we understand the father's love for those who don't. The joy of Jesus, not in the mind as we limp towards him, but in our hearts. That kiss that, Jesus, that God gives us changes us. 
changes our heart. From, from the mind, we go to the heart. And that is, as we know with any true relationship, is the key. The heart. With those many kisses that, Jesus, uh, that God gives his son, we get full restoration. We are a, I'm a builder, and when you, you make something new again, and when that son came perhaps with raggy clothes on and dirty old clothes, when his father ran out and kissed him with many kisses, he was re renewed, building, made new, new clothes. And this in ways, you know, as we go to him and he changes our lives, our friends can see it. And... As this, I'm sure the other workers on the farm or his friends on the farm could see the father's love by kissing and how it changed the son. Yes, I forgot about that. <laughs> Fair play, I knew I would. So I'm going to make one more point. So, as we come forward... Let us read. <laughs> I've told you a background of the story. I've oh, gone all embarrassed. <laughs> Shows you're never too old to be embarrassed. But I'm with friends. So, so um, who's doing the read? Oh, yes. Yes. So, Daniel. I'm getting carried away. I can see you in your element there. <laughs> okay, so um, the reading today is from Luke chapter 15, uh, verses 11 to. 31. And, this can, <laughs> and this can be found on page 1049 of your pew Bibles. So Luke 15, uh, starting from verse 11. Jesus continued, There was a man who had two sons. The younger one said to his father, Father, give me my share of the estate. So he divided his property between them. Not long after that, the younger son got together all he had, set off for a distant country, and there squandered his wealth in wild living. After he had spent everything, there was a severe, a severe famine in that whole country, and he began to be in need. So he went and hired himself out to a citizen of that country, who sent him to his fields to feed pigs. He longed to fill his stomach with the pods that the pigs were eating. But no one gave him anything. When he came to his senses, he said, How many of my father's hired men have food to spare? And here I am, starving to death. I will set out and go back to my father and say to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and against you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. Make me like one of your hired men. So he got up and went to his father. But while he was still a long way off, his father saw him and was filled with compassion for him. He ran to his son, threw his arms around him, and kissed him. The son said to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and against you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. But the father said to his servants, Quick, bring the best robe and put it on him. Put a ring on his finger and sandals on his feet. Bring the fattened calf and kill it. Let's have a feast and celebrate. For this son of mine was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found. So they began to celebrate. Meanwhile, the older son was in the field. When he came near the house, he heard music and dancing. So he called one of the servants and asked him what was going on. Your brother has come, he replied, and your father has killed the fattened calf because he has him back safe and sound. The older brother became angry and refused to go in. So his father went out and pleaded with him. But he answered his father, Look, all these years I've been slaving for you and never disobeyed your orders. Yet you never gave me even a young goat so I could celebrate with my friends. But when this son of yours who has squandered your property with prostitutes comes home, you kill the fattened calf for him. My son, the father said, you are always with me 
and everything I have is yours. But we had to celebrate and be glad, because this brother of yours was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found. Thank you. Being dyslexic, it sort of works, doesn't it? Having everything around the wrong way. But it was interesting, as I closed my eyes and listened to that story, this picture, I saw something else, too, well, something new for me, that the father could see his son a long way off. See his son a long way off. And I think, uh, in my own experience, that when I have my children that have gone away on various, whether it, well, it's never university, with my lot, or on holiday, or go, traveling the world, as I pray to them, I never feel that far away. They may be far away, but they're close in my heart. That's something that drawn out of that picture as it was read to us again for me. And that second son, I is the one who tried to earn his father's love, doesn't he? Try to earn his father's love. And those lovely words, I am always with you and everything I have is yours. But back to this many kissy. Kissy kiss. What does this kiss give us? It gives us comfort. Comfort. That knowledge that somebody loves you. It's comfort. But what do we say to God, you know, we, what about the past? What about the past? But this kiss cancels it out. Forgotten with just one kiss. All your past is forgotten with one kiss. Hidden under the blood of Jesus Christ. Then we may say, but what about the present? What about the present? One kiss takes that away. One of my favorite songs is Jesus takes me how I am. I can come no other way. He loves us just as we are. We don't need to worry about the present. That kiss cancels it. But what about the future? Oh, no, no. What about the future? We will not stray with that kiss. As God works us not through the mind, but through the heart, we will want to stay with him. He has a journey for all of us. He knew us before we were even born. We shouldn't be worried about the future. And as Pe Penny will share this bread and wine, a symbol of Jesus dying on that cross for us and r rising to give us all new hope. We pray today that as we take this bread and wine, we feel that kiss. We feel that kiss of God, which we can call him Father through his Son, Jesus Christ. So let us pray. Lord, we just thank you for this comfort of the kiss, Lord, that we get from you. Help us to be still and know that kiss. And for those who are still searching, Lord, let them make that decision to get up and go and find the Father. Lord, we know that you will run to meet everyone who needs to be saved, who want to wash away that old life, who wants to wash away the past, you will make new through that kiss, Lord. Lord, we just know that you will take us as we are now. And I encourage those people that may be limping towards their father and feel they're unworthy. He will accept you, Lord, just how you are. We know that. We thank you for it. And the future, Lord. Through that resurrection, we have hope. We have hope. Help us not to stray, Lord. And as we take this bread and wine, let us be renewed. Let our hearts be filled with the knowledge that your kiss is forever. In Jesus' name, amen.